Now let's say I want to solve this question. The question is longest remaining time first. Just like shortest remaining time first, it is longest remaining time first. The difference is there uh, we have been taking the shortest jobs and then we'll stop after executing every uh, job for some time and then we shall see, we'll see uh, if there is any new job which is having a shorter burst time. Here we should we do the same thing. We start with some job and then execute it for some time and then stop and see whether we got any new process which is having a uh, you know longest uh, remaining time or longest burst time and then uh, we could continue it that way and now there is a chance that uh, see the, ba ba the basic difference is like maybe you could think of this longest remaining job first as like this let us say in your two hands you have two bread and one bread is longer than the other one then maybe you'll you'll bite the longer one first and then you'll find it out that the other one is not the longer then you take it and bite it and again you'll find out that this one is longer bite it find out that this one is longer bite it right so that is how you know this this is going to work so whenever one process is longer we are going to take it and then schedule it but after executing for some time the other one becomes longer and now we'll, we'll take the other one and execute it and this keeps on happening right so now just watch it uh, so you very simple but then you should be really careful about the details in the sense you have to keep track of many things here one is what are the process available and what are their burst times and then what are their arrival times and one more thing whenever two processes are having the same burst time we shall pick the one with the lowest arrival time right so even though i start the gantt chart at zero i need not i am not going to schedule anything till one right so because one is the one is the earliest arrival time so I am going to take process P1 and run it for 1 unit which means till 2. Therefore its burst time will now become 1. Now at time t equal to 2 we got one more process available which is P2 and its burst time, burst time is 4. Now among these two burst times 1 and 4 it is clear that 4 is longer therefore I am going to schedule 4 first. So P2 I am going to schedule it and run it for 1 more unit and now it, its remaining burst time will become 3. Now the time is 3. Now by the time 3, P3 is also available and now if you check it, 1, 2, 3, all the 3 processes are available and the longest one is P3. Therefore, P3 gets scheduled and we shall run it for 1 unit and now we shall check what is the time and what, are, what have arrived. Now the time is 4 and by this time 4, all of them have arrived and among all of them, the longest one is P4. Therefore, I am going to schedule the P4 first, right? And I am going to run it for, uh, okay, how long? When all the process have arrived in the shortest job first, I mean shortest remaining time first, what we did is we converted that to shortest job and we have finished it off. But then here the difference is you cannot convert the algorithm now to longest job first, which means you cannot take this longest job and then finish it off. The reason is after executing for some time this one, someone else will become longer. See after executing 3 units of uh, P4 then p3 will become 5 and p4 will become 5 now there is uh, there is nothing you know now p4 is no longer the longest one isn't it therefore the longest one there is a tie so what you should do is run a process until some process some other process becomes the longest one right so that is the, that is the method you should do but anyway i think uh, it will be directly difficult for you to observe it so let me go in step by step it will it will take some time but then in exam what you should do is Whenever you are scheduling this uh, 8, you see that how long I should run it so that some other process will become the longest. If I run it for 3 units, then the next process 5 will become the longest, right? Then I will I'll take this one and I will alternate, okay? Okay, fine. I'll Let me do it first. You will understand it. With more examples, I will make this point clear. Now I will run it for 1 unit only, 1 unit, so that it will be easy for you to understand. Actually, I should have run it for more units, but then to make this thing simple, I am running it for one unit, P4. Then what happens? This one will become 7. Now, which one is the longest? Again, P4. Therefore, I will again pick P4 and run it for one unit, right? Then what is it? It is going to be 6. And again, I longer one is P4. Let me pick P4 itself and run it for one more unit, so which is 6. 7 here. And now it will be 5. Interesting. Now watch it. Two processes have the same burst time which are both showing 5. Therefore both are longer. Then which one should I choose? I told you that whenever there is a tie between the burst times, the tie is going to be broken by considering the arrival times. So whichever has uh, arrived early, 
that one I am going to take it. So there is a tie between P3 and P4 and the early process is P3. So I am going to take P3 here. P3 I am going to schedule it for one time. Then this will become 4. Now which one has become longer? P4, right? So I am going to take P4 and schedule it for 1. Okay, it is 8 and it is 9, right? And now this one has become 4, right? And again, which one has become longer now? P3, depending on the arrival time. Then I'll schedule it for one more time and it is going to be 3. And again, P4 becomes longer. So P4, I'll P3 or P4. Now P2 has also come into picture with the same time as P3. Therefore, you should run P3, P4 and sorry, P2 and then P3 and then P4 and again the same thing will repeat right so I have to run P2 P3 and P4 right so it is going to be 2 2 and 2 now isn't it it will be 12 13 14 again you run them for one more time now P2 P3 P4 because all the um, all the bus times are same and they are longest and they are all you know according to the arrival times P2 is first that is why P2 is scheduled then P3 then P4 right therefore this one will become 1 1 and 1 and this one will be 15 16 and 17 right and now if you watch it all the four process are now having the same bus time which is 1 now what you should do is you should schedule them all of them one by one so which one will get top priority p1 because of arrival time then p2 then p3 then p4 right therefore this is how all the process got completed right then what is the finishing time of this it is uh, 18 19 20 and 21 right so what is the advantage of this method is no process is going to complete until the longest process also approaches completion right it is not like any other uh, any other algorithm all the other algorithms you know the shorter one at least the shorter one will will be finishing it early right but here even though a process is very short even though it requires only two units of time it will be postponed till the other other process will reach the same time which means all the process will actually you know approximately finish at the same time if you look at the completion time of p1 p2 p3 p4 they are very close right because we are pushing all the process till the end uh, if a process is having longer burst time then we are going to complete it first uh, but we are not going to completely finish it we are going to just push all the process till the end so that all of them is all of them are going to complete at the same time now if you watch the completion times completion times watch it what is the completion time of P1? P1 completed at 18 and P2 completed at 19, P3 at 20 and P4 at 21, right? And now we can find out the turnaround time. Turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. Now turnaround time is the first one is 17, second one is 17, third one is 17 and fourth one is 17. Interesting. All of them are waiting the same turnaround time, right? And now, what about the waiting time? Waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time. So how much is that? Waiting time for this one is 15. Waiting time for this one is 13. Waiting time for this one is, uh, in this case, it is 11. And waiting time for this one is um, 9, right? Fine. And then, we could even find out the response time. What is the response time? You, you see the first time a process got scheduled and when it has actually arrived. So since its arrival uh, till its uh, you know first scheduling, what is the time elapsed? Now we can find out the response times like this. Response time. For the first one response time is first one got scheduled at uh, time t equal to 1 and when did it arrive at 1 which means whenever it has arrived it got scheduled therefore it need not wait for any response it is actually response time is 0 it immediately responded and what about p2 it got scheduled for the first time at 2 and it arrived at 2 therefore response time is 0 what about p3 it got scheduled for the first time at 3 and it arrived at 3 therefore response time is 0 
P4 the same thing it got scheduled at 4 and it arrived at 4 therefore response time is 0 right so you can find out what is the average turnaround time what is the average waiting time and what is the average uh, response time in this example it so happened that response time of all the process is 0 but then it need not be true and it is not true for all the examples of this algorithm which means here it so happened that whenever a process has newly arrived it turned out to be the longest process available and therefore it got the chance to execute immediately that is why uh, you know response times are all zeros but then it is not true for all the for everything okay um, now now the interesting thing is uh, everything is going to be finished okay with, with some more examples we shall analyze it right instead of analyzing it with this simple example same example uh, we shall analyze it with more examples and you please uh, take care while uh, executing this because it is not as easy as the other ones you should keep track of what is the you know burst time and along along with that you should be keeping track of the gantt chart okay